Hello, and how is everyone doing today? And welcome to the Persevering Podcast. I am your host, Carrie Braggs, and I'm glad to be here today. Uh, today's topic, just going to jump right into it, is what to expect from Persevering Perspectives, because I know a lot of people don't know uh, what it is we do in this ministry. So I'm just going to throw a few things out there and just have a discussion, so to speak. So grab yourself a cup of coffee, orange juice, or a drink of water, muffin, donut. Now, I'm not supplying all these things. Let's get that understood. I'm just saying if you got some of those things, just enjoy. Okay, <laughs> now that we've gotten that out of the way, before I get started... I would like to throw a disclaimer out there uh, because God kind of touched my heart and had to redirect me because I started getting uh, caught back up in my emotions, so to speak, within going forth in ministry. And you have to uh, (laughs) allow the Holy Spirit to guide you. Because once we get caught up in our emotions, then it's so easy for us to backslide. It's so easy for us to uh, get caught up in the things of the world. And we are striving yet to stay away from those things. And so uh, I felt that rising up in me. And so I wanted to take the time to uh, say that God placed upon my heart that I need to... Uh, have a softer touch within how I go forth because even though I know the truth and many who are uh, mature in the word know the truth and uh, even those who just see a lot of the things that are going on and know right from wrong and have morals and values uh, know the truth and know what's going on there uh, still are those who don't understand what is going on with a lot of the things in the culture uh, a lot of the lies that are going forth and and so they truly do need to be educated and uh, God placed it upon my heart uh, even though I feel that there are so many sensitive subjects out there right now and that um there are uh, so many uh, uncomfortable topics I'll say that so many things that um, people don't want to deal with but I know as a man of God that these things must be dealt with these difficult uh, things must be talked about these uh, difficult uncomfortable situations must be dealt with we we must become comfortable with being uncomfortable if that makes any sense to you i mean uh it just says that uh there's a bigger picture and it's our us being comfortable is not the most important thing because persecution is here and it's getting worse with Christianity and uh, those in different countries they are suffering and dying our brothers and sisters are suffering and dying (laughs) uh, for the name of Christ and so a lot of times in uh, my heart and in my mind um, that righteous indignation rises up so to speak to where the passion comes forth that How can we sit on the sideline while brothers and sisters are being killed? And most people don't understand what's going on or know what's going on. And that's not helping. You know, that intensity, all they hear is someone speaking aggressively and uh, with anger and all these things. That's all the people hear as compared to someone saying this is 
serious and we need to stand up and take note as the body of Christ and as the people of America to the injustices that are going on and the persecution that is here that is coming and that our brothers and sisters are suffering around the world everyone is not going to understand it that way see it that way or hear it that way and so god placed it upon my heart that hey i sent you to go forth to discuss these uncomfortable sensitive issues and topics but even though that's important that I need to um, say it in a right manner I need to refrain from being so emotional and passionate <laughs> I need to be able to speak calmly I need to be able to uh, bring the facts and statistics forth to be able to um, be able to let people know that I'm not just throwing my opinion out there like so many others, but that I have done my homework, I've done my research, I've done my due diligence to be able to bring forth um, the information that I am within uh, the podcasts and videos that I bring forth. <laughs> and so... Um, as God moved upon me, I had shut down everything for the night, but I didn't have peace. I didn't have peace with some of the other recordings I had recorded uh, for a uh, future broadcast. And um, I was just not at peace, and I was wondering why. And God so graciously brought it to my attention. This is why. You are not going forth as I would have you go forth to represent me, my son. These are the topics and situations that I put you in to where they are sensitive and that they are uncomfortable and that I will not allow you to have peace until you speak on these things, until you uh, educate yourself and educate others and and help bring these things to the forefront to bring about a change. Even though all that has been put into place, your presentation is not acceptable unto the Lord. So therefore, basically, I was being told that, um, that my sacrifice, so to speak, was not acceptable, just like with Cain and Abel. And he told him, he's like, why is your continence down? He's like, if, if you do right, if you do right, uh, won't, uh, well, Abel told Cain, he said, if you do right, won't God accept your, accept your offering? And so I'm going to take heed. I'm not going to turn around and kill anybody. I'm not going to kill my brother. <laughs> I'm going to say, hmm, you gave me some great advice. So I'm going to take heed to that. And so I sit here calmly and bring forth this message about what Persevering Perspectives is about. Um, we are about stepping outside of the church in mind, body, and spirit, meaning that, um, that we need to be engaging the culture we need to be educating the culture and equipping the culture as well as equipping, engaging, and educating the church as well. But we need to do that alongside the culture because there's a disconnect in the body of Christ with the job we are supposed to be doing, which is taking the gospel to the world. <coughs> There's a disconnect because we are in the churches and we are preaching and teaching to uh, mostly Christians who are in the walk, who are in the faith. And, you know, some 
continue to come into the churches, but the churches are not mostly made up of those coming in seeking Christ. It's mostly made up of those who are there and are walking with Christ and trying to continue to stay encouraged and strengthen. And so therefore, we need to be looking outside the church to take the message. And that's where a persevering perspective comes in at because I try to bridge those two because I realized years ago that uh, when we're in the church, um, we understand what is going on. We, we understand the language. We understand the Bible. We understand our walk. But when we get out in the world so many times, all of a sudden, uh, we change, so to speak. Our opinions start to rise up above God's word. All of a sudden, well, church is over here and God is over here, but life and my opinions are over here and uh, there's a breakdown. But when we tend to understand that all of these things are tied together, that we are a Christian all the time then i believe we can understand how to be able to go forth and uh, discuss the sensitive topics of uh, dealing with homosexuality or uh, dealing with um, regular islam and not radical islam because there are so many things that have been put into place to where when you discuss certain things, um, people get nervous, uh, people get uh, offended, and, and a lot of it is man-made, created by the media and things like these. And so uh, here we try to help people get past those things and start realizing that we cannot just stay in a church house and kind of bury our heads like ostriches. And, and just act like the things that are going on around us are not happening because if you are paying attention, those things are no longer out in the world. They have come into the church. And if uh, we as the, the body of Christ, the true believers, that remnant that God always leaves to carry the torch, uh, if we don't. Uh, stand up then um, it's just going to continue to get worse uh, it's just going to continue to get worse and um, that's why uh, this ministry is here to fill in the gaps to be able to um, show you how to defend yourself against some of these sensitive issues uh, against these lies and accusations that are going forth <coughs> because the longer we're silent the longer uh, different groups and and the media gain strength and gain uh, momentum with these lies I always uh, say to myself that if someone was standing right in my face and they're lying on me to someone else there's no way that I would stand there and allow someone to say I stole something from them or uh, to say that I attacked them or uh, whatever the allegations may be if you're standing there and you're lying on me I'm going to defend myself and so it made me look at it within the circumstances going on with the body of Christ and the culture I will be looking at the media and all these different outlets and magazines and just all of the lies and things being twisted around and I would get so upset because I'm like how dare they just lie on us like this this is not true uh, just because we don't agree with homosexuality that does not mean I hate anyone I mean it, it's just frustrating to see those things because um, I believe many of us have friends and family who are involved in the homosexual lifestyle we don't agree with their lifestyle and actually they don't agree with uh, us and, and and what we believe either 
but we still love each other. We still have relationships. We still fellowship. And so when you see things like that going on and those lies being told, it's just uh, it's just very frustrating within that. And so I thought about that and I was like, I would not allow anyone to lie on me. And I asked myself, why is it that the church is allowing people to lie on us? No one in in the community, the church community, seem to be upset or going forth. When you look out in the news and you see all the other different groups uh, protesting uh, uh, for what they believe or against the lies they say are being told against them, you see them out there saying this is not true. And so for a while, it just frustrated me because I'm like, I'm not seeing the church. Where are we? Where is the body of Christ? No one is saying anything. And, and you know, on and on. And then I remember God came to me and it was like, more or less, you're upset about those things, huh? And I'm like, yes, uh, it's, it's lies and all these different things. And. And you know how God operates to where when you don't see something being done about a certain thing, guess who is going to be sent to take care of it? Exactly you. And so that's what happened. He put it on my heart that if you don't see anyone out there saying anything about it, I guess you need to say something about it. And so here I am with the ministry going forth now to uh, try to help mobilize the church and others who uh, hold to the same views that we do and same beliefs that we do. A person does not have to be a Christian to share the same uh, morals and values when it comes to uh, family, when it comes to uh, protecting our children, when it comes to freedom of speech, when it comes to freedom of religion. I mean, people don't have to be Christians to say, hey, you know what? They do have that uh, right. They do have that right to their religious freedoms and and they have the right to freedom of speech and and all those things. So uh, it, it doesn't just apply to the Christian community. So these are some of the things we stand for here at Persevering Perspectives. And as we uh, start um, loading up more videos and, and blogs and, and podcasts, I uh, just uh, pray that you all come out and spend some time with us to uh, help navigate the waters of the culture as things go forth. And uh, I just pray that uh, the the... Uh, The ministry becomes a blessing to you as well as it has been a a blessing to me. But as I said, I just want to do things in the right manner. And um, God placed it upon my heart to regroup, tone it down, but still go forth with the message of the truth. Amen. 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 Okay, so that's just a little bit of background about uh, Persevering Perspectives. So I hope you will continue to tune in weekly uh, because hopefully there will be something here on the site to be able to uh, help you gain understanding and uh, grow spiritually, uh, to be able to uh, witness to others, to be able to engage others, to uh have the facts when you go forth so you have that education of what's going on and why you stand where you stand and be able to um, uh, be able to give people those reasons so it's not just looking like you have a blind faith and always equipping to make sure that you have all the weapons you need to be able to fight Uh, In this battle we are fighting, which is spiritual warfare. And only through us maturing in Christ can we see those things and uh, have the weapons 
that we need and know how to use them as well. So I just pray that you have a great day and that you tune in for future uh, future podcasts. And remember, always keep persevering. Turn back.